Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial on Beep Street Drumboard Modular Groove Box. In this video I would like to show you or introduce you to the samplers in Groove Box. Let's click on the plus sign, let's click on generator and here on the sampler you find the number of those. You have a flexi sampler, you have a recorder, a sampler and a shot sampler. Let's start looking at the flexi sampler. So, it is a normal module as any others, but it has uh, on uh, the heading here also another option for recording. So let's start to go through the option here and the main module. So here you have a black box. This is where you select your waveform. At the moment there is nothing. So if you click on it, it will open um, a dialog box where you can choose sample to uh, use. In this case, it opens in the folder called samples. Here you have some predefined uh, sample, including samples, including loops. You can audition some of them, like for example, clicking on the play sign on the uh, on the left hand side here of where it says Congo Loop One Two Five. You can create a new folder, like so, type in and pressing enter. You can import a sample, okay? You select one and you're imported. You can export, you first click on export and then you select the sample, it will export the sample you selected, or you can import an entire folder. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's select um, Dirty Groove 85 and let's audition it first. Okay, let's click on it and then press them. As you can see, we loaded the waveform now inside the sampler. So, if I click on the pad, it will trigger the sample. We can adjust the pitch, which will give you the effect of playing faster because it's going higher over pitch. Let's double click and reset the value. We can increase the speed or decrease the speed, and the moment at the moment is a normal speed. Let's see the effect of um, changing the speed but not the pitch. Very slow. When it goes up here to the top, it's practically zero, so it shouldn't move. And when you start to move to the left, it will go the opposite way. Very interesting. Okay, let's double click on it and reset it to the normal value. You have a play at the mode at the moment called mode, which is called one shot. So you press and it will play the sample. If you keep pressing, it will start again. But you cannot stop it. You can set to play one slice if it is defined. At the moment, there are no slices. We will look at that uh, later on. You can say play in a loop, so if you click and hold, it will continuously go in a loop. You can go on a loop ping pong, which is quite interesting. It goes back and forth like a ping pong. And as soon as you release, of course, the button and the mouse, or you let go from the touch screen, it will stop. You can also have a scratch mode. When you enable these, if you press on the pad, nothing happens. And what um, you need to do is act on the offset uh, uh, dials here. Which is very nice if you want to produce a scratch effect. Um, <clears throat> let's go back to one shot. Here you have launch options. At the moment it's set to trigger, so it will be triggered or you can wait for a gate. <clears throat> so you need to give the right impulse as you let go and the gate finishes, okay? While on trigger, you just wait for the trigger and then he continues to play. Okay, 
so I'll leave it normally to trigger. <clears throat> Here you have uh, the start uh, slice on the offset, where you can set it also based on the velocity that you press on the keys, on the note and random, which will show you shortly. You have an offset dial. So if we put this something like that and we press again, it will start for the offset uh, vertical bar, that orangey bar, which will start there. So it could come handy. You can set where the loop start and where the loop ends. So if I set the mode to <coughs> loop, it will start from the offset. And when it will start to loop, it will continue between the yellow and the red vertical bars. <coughs> cool. Okay. So let's set that to where we should. Uh, where it should be, when it, we can impact how velocity uh, would be <coughs> affected by playing the sample in there. We can have a fade in, in terms of um, uh, when the, the sample start in millisecond, the same on a fade out. Let's set one shot. And let's increase the fade out. As you can hear, it's fading out. Let's increase the fade in. So you can see the effect of fading in and fading out. Okay, perfect. Now let's go back to the waveform. In here, you can, when you load the waveform, you can load again another one if you wish so. You can save it, you can play. You can record another one, or you can edit the waveform. In the edit um, menu, you have uh, the option to normalize, <clears throat> which will normalize your waveform. You can trim to the loop area. So if you, for example, you set uh, from there to here, which will be your trim area, when you trim to the loop area, it will practically delete this part and this part and we'll leave you with this part here. Okay, at the moment we are not interested in that. <clears throat> also, what you can do, you can set slices and when you click on set slices, you have uh, additional options. You can set 4, 6, 8, 16, 32 slices or you can detect transients or remove all slices. So let's say we select transients. So you will do it best to select where appropriately put slices. And you can click on, on somewhere in the waveform to add another one or click and hold to move it or click again to remove it. <clears throat> okay, perfect. Um, other option which are very interesting, you can remove all the slices. You can say set 16 slices or as many as you prefer. Um, what I like to show you is how to detect transients first, like so. And um, so if you, let's bring up the keys now. At the moment, it's playing the loop as normal. Let's click um, the X to come out from here. Let's select the mode to slice. So if we do that, it will play the first slice, right? And it will stop. And at the moment, the start slice is set to offset. So if I move the offset to that slice here, when I click play on a key, it will play the slice where the offset is, which can come very handy. Or the other thing I can do is based on velocity. So based on the type of velocity that uh, I press on the key, it will change the type of slice I play. Or I can go by note, which is very nice. So it will play uh, the different slices based on the key keys that you play on the keyboard. So very, very interesting, very useful. Or you can go random. I'm not sure when I will use random, but um, if you want to have fun, uh, let's try with uh, random. Now, let's go back to off. Let's go back to one shot. And let's look now at the sync option. So, let's go back to C2. 
let's insert the note there on my pattern and let's extend that to the end. So let's go on, click on the pattern and see the, the setting on this button. So there are four steps per bit and there are four bits in a pattern. So if you click play now for the pattern, It will come roughly halfway through the waveform and when it completes that pattern. So if you go back to it in the pattern there are four bits and in for every bit there are four steps. So if you play that for the pattern, so let's change that to eight. So when you click play, it will play the entire loop all through the pattern. At the moment it's set to native, that is why it's not doing it. So let's say that I want to have um, a bit now. I synchronize it to a bit. Let's change that to four bits. It will synchronize it to four bits. Well, I is playing repeatedly uh, the same uh, waveform. Let's change that to, uh, for example, two bit. So you finish off way through. Okay, which makes sense. So with four bit, okay, you have um, effectively the play for the entire play form inside your eight bits. Um, button. And if you say I have only four bits for the pattern, it will be perfectly now uh, aligned. So as you can see, it goes to the end of this pattern now and it finishes to play the waveform. And then when the pattern restart, it will play from the beginning of the waveform. When I have selected uh, eight bits per pattern, it will continue to play, repeat the waveform from the beginning in the next uh, section of steps per partner, like for example, so. Okay, but of course we could say Assign it to a bit. Or we could um, stretch it over um, two bits. Or we could um, go to 16 bits as a sync. bit per second or 12 bit okay so you get um, you get uh, the idea of uh, how this works so let's go back now to four bits and make these um, um, four bits in pattern And it's perfectly aligned so there are four bits in a pattern and this is synchronized to play within four bits so it will play perfectly so depending on the selection that you have on the sync or on the and the number of bits you have in the pattern then you can synchronize the, your waveform to be played accordingly um, to your pattern the next option how feature i want to show you is the recording um, feature if you press on recording here we are here is where you can clear and uh, the waveform but not the slices or you can remove entirely the slices 
Um, here you can synchronize the instant to recording or by a threshold or by a pattern. So if you click on the pattern, and I already showed these features in the previous video, but it waits for the pattern to start the recording and also wait for the pattern to stop, to stop the recording. The threshold is waiting for uh, something to come through the input signal and instantly start straight away. And the source can be module from a module, internal group box or external. So let's record my voice. One, two, three. Uh, let's stop there and uh, let's click on the C2. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, as you can see, uh, we have a, a recorded a waveform. Here, for example, we can say move the offset um, somewhere here. One, two, three. Okay. And then what we could do. Or we can go inside the waveform and we can say uh, let's take the loop area up to there and here where it ends we go to the edit function we say uh, trim to loop area here we go we have trimmed uh, the waveform one two three okay perfect let's come out of this now let's play one two three one two so perfectly aligned to the pattern uh, as explained earlier the pattern has four bits in a pattern and we have um, four step for each bit so 16 uh, steps in total and at the moment we have it synchronized to play the waveform um, within four bits and of course you can change that you can also assign it to the pitch which will make it uh, incredibly difficult to uh, to control because you have to put the pitch very low just to go back to the native uh, play and or the waveform and also you need to pay attention to what keys you play you play on, on the keyboard other things um, you can enable or not the monitors and you can then all have the usual setting uh, to control the input source like so and the pitch source the gate and the velocity so I hope you enjoyed uh, this tutorial a little bit longer and the normal. I will do others on Simplest and uh, consider this an introduction. And as always, uh, um, see you next time. Bye.